Good evening. Welcome, everyone. We have a full house here. Um, this is the Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, August 22nd, 2019. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Draper? Here. Ms. Atkins? Mr. Jensen? Here. Mayor Abu Asli? Here. Mr. Sternad? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Ms. Gadelia? Here. Thank you. This time we have a moment of silence. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so one of my favorite parts of the job is when we get to welcome new members to the awesome Marion team. And this, tonight we have a few of them. So I will come down front and. Ah, there we go. Today we are here for a swearing in for four of our paid on call firefighters who have completed their first year of probation. After their first year, they are no longer considered rookies. <laughs> Over the years, swearing in of firefighters was never conducted in Marion. But after I became fire chief, I felt it was imperative that all firefighters serving our community take an oath to serve that community. We have a duty, and it's clear to see, it is to be ready at all times to serve the public, and we are to always pursue excellence so that we may serve our citizens with first-class service. Therefore, we make our promise. Gentlemen. Stand up. I didn't know you were there. A quick introduc introduction of our paid on call volunteer firefighters. We have Charlie Potter. Charlie works for the family business here in Marion, Potter Real Estate. Charlie attended our 2014 Citizens Academy and found it very interesting. He stated, as a resident and business owner in Marion, I feel I could be a good asset to the paid on call staff of the Marion Fire Department. Being self-employed for the last 17 years, I am available throughout the day. I've always wanted a way to give back to Marion. Then we have Brandon Fairbanks. Brandon is a superintendent for Knutson Construction. Brandon attended the 2016 Citizens Academy, and he stated, I have lived in Marion my entire life, but up until I participated in the Citizens Academy, I had never thought of applying. Knowing what the fire department does outside of fighting fires, along with fighting fires, I believe that I can be an asset and would love to serve the community. Andrew Clark. Andrew is a data analyst at Limo Link here in Marion. Andrew stated, I live and work in Marion, so this would be a chance to give back to my community and help make the neighborhood my children will grow up in a safer place. Hopefully, you will give me the chance to show that I can be an asset to your organization. He has that chance. And then we have Alexander Fullerton. Alexander is a field worker for DuPont Pioneer on North Albernet Road. Alex attended the 2016 Citizens Academy, and he stated, I wish to become a member of the association because a job that involves public service, teamwork, and the conditioning of the body and mind is a job that I will be most effective and happy in. Thank you.
the, the, the significance of the helmets, um, when they first come on the fire department, they're on probation for an entire year. And they actually wear orange helmets so that on the fire ground we know they may not know everything they should know. <laughs> <laughs> so once they've passed their probationary period, they are then promoted and therefore they're black helmets. So congratulations, guys. Thank you for Thanks. being with us. Fire department got the quadruple, we get the trifecta. <laughs> Come on up, guys. Actually, you go ahead and Gabe, Adam. Starting from right to left here, uh, the first officer I want to talk about, uh, this is Gabe Humphrey, uh, or we will now know him as 203. <laughs> He's 24 year old, 24 years old, married to his wife Laura. I see Laura's here. There's Laura. Always like to recognize the families as well. They make a commitment to this too. Gabe grew up in Atkins, Iowa, and currently resides in Cedar Rapids. Gabe attended Benton Community High School, and then continued his education at Kirkwood Community College, where he earned an Associate of Applied Science degree in Criminal Justice. Gabe also joined the Iowa National Guard in 2012 and is currently still active as a squad leader and combat, me combat medic with the 209th Medical Unit. In the middle here, we have Adam Bond, AKA 204. He is 23 years old. Adam was raised in Valencia, California and graduated from Valencia High School. Adam attained his higher education at Cornell College in Mount Vernon, wh where he graduated in 2019, earning his Bachelor of Arts degree in political science. Adam, Adam remains close with his parents, Julian and Charmaine, as well as his three siblings, Alexis, Christian, and Jax. Last but not least, 205, Dylan Short. Dylan was born and raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where he grew up with his parents and two older brothers. Dylan began his college career at College of Alba Marul. Is that right? Okay. I knew I was going to butcher that. I apologize. Uh, before transferring to Old Dominion University, where he met his current fiance, Sammy. That's right. That's right. Dylan graduated in May of 2019 with a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity. Dylan and Sammy recently moved back. <coughs> Excuse me moved back to Sammy's home state of Iowa where they currently reside in Ely with their two dogs, Kata and Aspen. Um, as interim police chief, um, having you three here, I'm excited um, to welcome you three, three to the Marion family. Uh, not just the PD family, uh, but the Marion family as a whole. I hope for, lo for a long, fruitful career for each of you. I know how exciting of time this is. And I wish you nothing but the best as you begin your 16-week journey at the Iowa Law Enforcement Academy starting Monday. Um, following their 16 weeks at the Iowa Law Enforcement Academy, they get to come back to a 12-week training program, field training program here in Marion. So it's a long haul. It's challenging, but it's well worth it. Uh, I wish you all the best. Congratulations.
Congratulations to everyone again. And uh, as you can see, our growing city uh, needs, uh, always needs to add uh, public safety personnel. And so we welcome you to the team and look forward to your service. Thank you. Okay, um, next we have a few proclamations. The first one is for 14th Annual Five Seasons Stand Down Day. And Council Member Jensen will come down front and read it. And we do have Dan Tyne with the Lynn County Veterans Affairs here to accept it. Joe, are you coming forward too? And Joe Stetler, a Marion resident who is also very involved in Veterans Affairs. Yes. Welcome, gentlemen. All right, we'll start with the proclamation. Whereas, Lynn County Veteran Affairs, in partnership with the Cedar Rapids Metro Area Veterans Council, the Iowa City VA Medical Center, and the Lynn County Continuum of Care, will hold Lynn County's 14th annual Stand Down for Homeless and Near Homeless Veterans and Non-Veterans. And whereas, Stand Down is a term used in times of war in which exhausted combat units come off the battlefield to rest and recover in a place of safety. And whereas, according to the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, the first stand down was organized in 1988 by a group of Vietnam veterans in San Diego. And whereas today, stand down also refers to a community-based program that provides, assists homeless and near homeless veterans transition to community living by providing access to human service agencies, including benefits counseling, social security and veterans, employment and training assistance, eye exam screenings, health care screenings, housing services, legal assistance, mental and health treatment and substance abuse counseling. And whereas, stand downs have been used as an effective tool in reaching out to homeless veterans nationally, reaching more than 200,000 veterans and their family members. Now, therefore, I, Steve Jensen, standing in with Nick Abuasili, Mayor of City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim September 6, 2019, as the 14th Annual Five Seasons Stand Down Day and encourage citizens to recognize the positive impacts of this event to assist veterans and to express gratitude to those who have served and continue to serve. Thank you. Well, um, my name is Don Tyne. I'm the director of Lynn County Veteran Affairs, and I've been at this job um, 17 years. I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, and I know my looks and my age doesn't show, but I served for 34 years. So do the math. I'm an old guy. Joe Studler is a member of our uh, committee. He's also a, for a former um, Lynn County uh, commissioner. Um, there are 18,000 uh, veterans that live in Lynn County. And uh, we stress the fact that we are a county service, and so we are reaching out to all the local communities to support this event. Last year, we had about 200 individuals uh, attend our um, resource fair. There's over 80 vendors. It's at the Cedar Rapids Colonels Baseball Stadium. And uh, I'm going to be in touch to try to make sure uh, as many veterans that could benefit from this service uh, attend this event. Everything from free haircuts to employment opportunities to filing VA compensation claims and um, 
There's also some, uh, or uh, uh, I guess, some benefits. There's going to be a free hot meal, and um, it's been very successful, and we're going to continue to do this. But I really want to thank the city council and the citizens of Marion in supporting our efforts to try to serve our veterans here that live in Marion as well as Lynn County. Everything? No, you're good. I'm not running for office. <laughs> I'm not either, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, our next proclamation is for Intercultural Day, August 24, 2019. Is there anyone here to accept the proclamation? I will just read the proclamation. Whereas the, C the Cedar Rapids Marion metro area is comprised of a rich fabric of people of diverse cultures, national origins, religions, and traditions. Whereas this diversity is a community asset and strength that should be celebrated. Whereas the communities in the Cedar Rapids Marion metro area should be welcoming to all people and should foster a culture of inclusion, peace, justice, and intercultural understanding. Whereas we are living in a world of nations whose interdependence makes unity and respect for diversity a priority for the adma advancement of the human race. Whereas the communities of the Cedar Rapids Marion metro area should work to promote and achieve genuine and enduring intercultural cooperation. Whereas all people deserve the opportunity to achieve their fullest potential as contributing and productive members of our society and to chart their own destiny free from any form of discrimination. And whereas our leaders should work together to ensure equality, dignity, and freedom for all. Now therefore I, Nicholas Abu Asali, Mayor of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim Saturday, August 24th, 2019 as Intercultural Day in the City of Marion, Iowa and encourage all residents to observe this day by striving to value diversity and inclusion and committing to the treatment of all people with dignity and respect. I will be uh, reading this proclamation at the Intercultural um, Festival uh, event this, this Saturday. So, um, our last proclamation is for the Day of Remembrance for Victims of Hate Crimes. And uh, I've asked uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sternod to read the proclamation, and uh, Danielle Rizant is here from the Marian Civil Rights Commission to accept the proclamation. So, you please come forward and. <coughs> Whereas a hate crime has been identified as criminal offense against a person or property motivated in whole or in part by any offender's bias against a group to which the victim belongs or with which the victim identifies, such as race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, authenticity, gender, or gender identity. Whereas crimes fueled by bias and hate have a negative impact on the victims, their families and friends, and their entire community. Whereas the residents of Marion, Iowa, should stand united in condemnation of all acts of violence fueled by hate and bias. And whereas the residents of Marion, Iowa, should remember and honor all lives lost or damaged by such acts, including the acts of recent events, and stand united in rejecting hate and promoting unity, respect, tolerance, in and inclusion. Now, therefore, I, Randy Sternad, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Marion, Iowa, on behalf of Nicholas Abu Asli, Marion of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim August 22, 2019, as a day of remembrance of all people who have lost their lives or been impacted by hate crimes and encourage all residents to commit to building and accepting, welcoming an inclusive community where all individuals can live with dignity and free from fear. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I spent quite a bit of time writing those the last two um, proclamations. I think they're very important. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, we don't have any presentations.
uh, on the agenda this evening. Uh, we do have at this time a public forum for comments from the public on topics listed on the agenda but not associated with the public hearing. Is there anyone here to address the council on any item that is uh, on the agenda but not associated with the public hearing? Please come forward. If there's anyone here to speak on an item that has a public hearing, you will have the opportunity to speak at that time. And any um, presentation on any issue that is not on the agenda, there will also be a time later in the agenda for that. So, Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda as follows. This will include items A1 through F3 and resolutions 27891 through 27903, except we will pull and discuss separately item A5, which is resolution number 27891. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda, including items A1 through F3 and resolutions 27892 through 27903, with 27891 being discussed separately. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Can you make the motion on 7891? Yeah. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27891, approving the City Council appointed boards, commissions, or committees, policies, and procedures. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution numbers 27891, approving the City Council appointed boards, commissions, or committees, policies, and procedures. Discussion. Council Member Gadela. Yes, um, I just ask that we pull this um, to call special attention to it. We discussed it on Tuesday. I think everyone up here was unanimous that we have a similar resolution drafted for City Council members that mirrors uh, what we're approving tonight or what we just what we will probably be approving um, in this ordinance, um, but this one talks about appointments and we're elected, so there will be some differences. So staff will work on that and bring it back. Okay. Any questions on that one? Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 27891, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. please say no. Motion is approved. For the next section, I will turn over the gavel to Mayor Pro Tem. Mr. Brown? Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abouassili's abstention from voting and discussion as follows. Includes items D1 through F2, resolutions 27904 through 27907. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abelosley's abstention from voting and discussion for items D1 through F2. This will be resolutions number 27904 through 27907. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of this resolution say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion passes and we have one abstention from the mayor. Thank you. I'll turn the meeting back over to the mayor. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27908, approving fiscal year 2019 through 2020 operating budget transfers. Second. Again. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Gadela and seconded by Council Member Jensen to approve resolution number 27908. Approving fiscal year 2019-2020 operating budget transfers. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the resolution number 27908, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27909, approving fiscal year 2019 to 2020 capital budget transfers. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27909, approving fiscal year 2019 2020 capital budget transfers. Discussion? 
All those in favor of resolution number 27909, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27910, approving a memorandum of understanding regarding tax increment financing, incentives for Victory Sports Center Incorporated. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27910, approving a memorandum of understanding regarding tax increment financing incentives for Victory Sports Center, Inc. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 27910, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion has been approved. Mayor, I move to approve a letter of support for the redevelopment tax credits program for Brownfield and Grayfield sites to the Iowa Economic Development Authority, <coughs> IEDA, for the redevelopment of the existing YMCA site. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve a letter of support for the redevelopment tax credits program for Brownfield and Grayfield site, sites through the Iowa Economic Development Authority for the redevelopment of the existing YMCA site. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, <coughs> please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. May I move to approve resolution number 27911, approving purchase of Axon Fleet 2 in-car camera system in the amount of $117,860. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27911, approving the purchase of Axon Fleet 2 in-car camera systems in the amount of $117,860. Discussion? All those in favor of approving resolution number 27911, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to receive, file, and discuss the IDOT letter regarding speed reduction request. Second. It has been moved and seconded to receive, file, and discuss the I Iowa Department of Transportation letter regarding speed reduction request. Discussion? And as we heard on Tuesday, they're not going to do anything at this time, so. <laughs> Not much to discuss, I guess, but <laughs> anyone had anything to add? Okay, all those in favor of the motion to receive and file uh, and discuss the letter, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 2791 to approving change order number one with SAK Construction LLC regarding the 2019 sanitary sewer slip lining project in the amount of $47,331.25. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27912, approving a change order number one with SAK Construction LLC regarding the 2019 sanitary sewer slip lining project in the amount of $47,331.25. Discussion? And this again is to increase the work being done this this time because we were we were under budget. Correct. So okay. um, we got really good bid prices. So we're just doing more with the amount of money that we have. Right. Okay. Very good. Discussion. All those in favor of resolution number two seven nine one two, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. <clears throat> Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27913, amending the contract with Mediacom Communications Corporation regarding the undergrounding of fiber cable associated with the Tower Terrace Road Project Phase 4, 5, 6. What is that? 6? Six. Six. <laughs> Winslow <laughs> Road to Lennon Lane in the amount not to exceed $33,638.73. Second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> to approve resolution number 27913, amending the contract with Mediacom Communications Corporation regarding undergrounding of fiber cables associated with the Tower Terrace Road Project Phase 6. Four. 
in an amount not to exceed $33,638.73. Discussion? <laughs> this is why we repeat motions. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's clear what we're voting on. Especially uh, our Roman numerals. <laughs> any discussion? All those in favor of, of approving resolution number 27913, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. I'm turning over the gavel to Mayor Pro Tem. Ms. Kibale? Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27914, approving payment to the William J. Roche Family Trust per Lynn County Cases, LACV 087659 and CVCV 087911 in the amount of $82,900. Second. It has been moved and second to approve resolution number 27914, approving the payment to the William J. Rausch Family Trust for Lynn County Cases LACV 087659 and CVCV 087911 in the amount of $82,900. Discussion? Would you like a quick staff report since you guys did not have a memo? Please, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the location that we're talking about, this is Highway 100. It is Tama Street to the south, Armar Drive that is currently constructed to the north that connects to Armar Drive. Um, the black line is the corporate limit between Cedar Rapids and Marion. Um, <clears throat> so what this was was, um, I'll go through the details here in the next slide, but basically we condemned property to put the street in. Um, they appealed that. This was the court case that we had this week, and this is the result of the said court case. So back in October 6th of 2016, per resolution 25614, City Council directed us to proceed with condemnation. We had a com condemnation commission meeting on March 29th of 17, um, where there was a finding of $413,590.00. Um, there is then an appeal on that, even though we authorized the payment of that amount. And that is the cases that you cited in the, the resolution. Um, so this week, August 19th, 20th, and 21st, um, we had a jury trial. Um, the jury awarded um, the damages to be 82900 only instead of the 413590. So it's not in addition to, of, it is instead of. <laughs> um, so we are re moving or recommending approval of the $82,900. Uh, Kara was um, second chair on that, and if there's any legal questions, she can answer those. Um, Bob Goodwin was our um, first chair attorney, and then I was there representing the city. Okay, thank you. That brings it back up to the council. Mr. Draper. I have a question. If um, I, I fully realize that we have connection fee rights in the Marion area, what about on Highway 100? Do we have those so heights as well? Highway 100 is classified as a controlled access, so no property owner would be able to have direct access off of Highway 100. It would have to be 150 feet from Highway 100 until they would have access. So back on these two remnant pieces that are left over, the driveway for them would have to be 150 foot from Highway 100 in order to access those properties. Which, good, thank you. Ms. Gedalia. Yeah, I just want to thank the jury, whoever you are, um, <laughs> for saving us all this money. Thanks. Right? Huge difference. Huge. Seeing no other items for discussion, we'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor of resolution number 27914, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes, and we have one abstention with the mayor. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27915, approving change order number 14 with Genesis Equities, LLC, regarding the 2017 Central Corridor Improvements Project Phase 3, which is 13th to 19th Street, and this is regarding the modification of the stairs and landing in the amount of $4,795. Second. 
It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27915, approving the change order number 14 with Genesis Equities, LLC, regarding the 2017 Central Corridor Improvements Project, Phase 3. This is 13th to 19th Street, regarding the modification of the stairs and landing in the amount of $4,795. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 27915 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes with the abstention of the mayor. This brings us to number six, which is a public hearing regarding the 2019 runway, the 1735 reconstruction. Uh, do we have any intro onto this uh, from either of you before we open the public hearing? Yeah, if you want the staff report after you open the hearing, the hearing or if you want it with whichever order you want it. Uh, we'll take, uh, we'll go ahead and take yours first. Okay. Um, so this is a project to take the runway from 23 foot wide to 60 foot wide. Um, the original engineer's estimate was $2.2 million. Um, we received bids on 8 9 19. Uh, Today is the public hearing, approval of the contract, and award of the contract. It has a late start date of 9 9 18 with 40 working days and $750 per day in liquidated damages. It was bid as an HMA and PCC alternate bid. For the bids, we did receive four. The, low, the two low bids from L. Pelling and Abode both had HMA as the product being put down. Three and four from Streb and Horsefield were both uh, PCC. Um, what we are recommending is proceeding with the low bid from L.L. Pelling, which is package A, B, and D for a total price of $1,000,000. $818,256.41. Part D is some grooving um, to make traction for when the planes land. We're still doing some investigation to see if that's needed with the HMA material. And that can always be changed, ordered out if it's not needed. And so the Marion Municipal Airport Committee did meet on 8-14-19 and is recommending this award as well. Okay, um, so we see what obviously the bid was up there. What was our, uh, did we have a budget allocated for this project? Yes. So the amount that's in the capital improvements project for the entire airport is 3.2, but that's for other things as well, consultants, some okay, for the so design, for the zoning, other things as well. Okay, the, so we. The estimate was 2.2 million, so it came in under estimate. Okay. We didn't have a specific line item for just the runway itself, did we? It was a total project? Just that estimate was 2.2. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you for the presentation. So at this time, I'm going to open up the public hearing. This will give the opportunity for the public to come forward uh, and ask any questions before the council of the staff or uh, bring any items. So at this point, we'll ask anybody to come forward to speak uh, in favor of this project. Seeing none at this time, we'll ask the public to come forward on anybody who is against the project or like some more information. Seeing none, we'll close this public hearing <coughs> and we'll continue on. Mr. Brandt? Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27916, <coughs> accepting bids and awarding contract to LL Pelling Company. Incorporated regarding the 2019 runway 1735 reconstruction in the amount of $1,818,256.41. With base bid A plus B plus a D. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27916, accepting bids and awarding the contract to LL Pelling Company, Inc regarding the 2019 runway 1735 reconstruction in the amount of $1,000,000. $818,256.41. This will be base bid A plus B plus D. Discussion? Mr. Jensen. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, when I look at number one and number three, it's really looking at a difference of HMA versus concrete. And in times I've done projects for parking lots at our church and other projects, anytime the concrete we got pretty close to HMA, we were going concrete just due to the life expectancy, the fact that you don't have to seal coat or reseal 
uh, the HMA. So from the standpoint of the longevity of the HMA compared to the concrete, I know this is a an airport runway, not a parking lot, so it's, it's used differently. Is there a reason why HMA is preferred? Because that's only about an 8% difference, which I don't consider to be significant, and it's still under the budget. Sure. Is there a reason HMA is still preferred or recommended over the concrete bit? So similar, I'm not sure if you were on council at the time, but Lau Park, when we did that. I was not. The new parking lot on Irish Drive, we bid that the same way. So we designed these so they're structurally equivalent. So the asphalt's an inch thicker than the concrete. And so we made them so that they were structurally the same number. And so we didn't modify the bid so that it was A plus B bidding where they had to take the life cycle cost into it. Okay. And so it is based just like any other bid, it, irregardless of HMA versus PCC, it's the low bid wins. And so unfortunately we can't pick of what material we have, we want. The way that it was bid was the low bid wins. Okay, so, so as far as durability and all of that, those, even though one is concrete, one is HMA, the way they were bid, you're considering those to be equivalent? Correct. So then you're forced into, into the low bid? Yep. So we will still have future cost to the city for the runway probably at some time in the future to reseal that? Yeah, and even if it was concrete, there's still going to be costs in the future. Mm, all, right. all right. You've answered my question, though. Okay, thanks. Ms. Cadelia? Yeah, um, will we, if the uh, saw cut grooves aren't necessary, does the price come down? Yeah, so we would change order that out completely. So D is a, in that Excel spreadsheet, I think it was 75000 that would come out of it completely. Oh, awesome, okay, thanks. We just needed more research before we could make that decision. I've never saw cut HMA before. When would we start to see the movement on construction for this? Uh, so we have a late start date of 9918. Trying so to get it done yet this year. Around the corner. Sometime between now and then. <laughs> Very good. All right. Pretty quick. We're going to see start to see some movement, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, any other discussion before I move on? No. Okay, seeing none, we'll move uh, forward with uh, uh, voting. All those in favor of resolution number 27916, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes with the abstention of the mayor. Ms. Cadillac. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27917, approving contract and bond with LL Pelling Company, Inc., regarding the 2019 runway 17 35 reconstruction project. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27917, approving the contract and bond with LL Pelling Company, Inc., regarding the 2019 runway 1735 reconstruction project. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll wrap this one up. All those in favor of resolution number 27917, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes with the abstention of the uh, mayor. Mr. Jensen. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 27918, approving contract and bond with Abode Construction, Inc., regarding the 2019 Marion Fire Station Site Subdrain Package. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27918, approving the contract and bond with Abode Construction, <coughs> Inc., regarding the 2019 Marion Fire Station Site Subdrain Package. Discussion? Chief, is there anything to add to this? Pretty self-explanatory, unless there's been any changes to it. No. No? Nope. It, it came in under bid, so. Okay, very good. Seeing no, no uh, further discussion on this, all in favor of resolution number 27918, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes again with the abstention of the mayor. Mr. Brandt. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution 27919, approving the issuance of building permits for lots one through three, core three duplex buildings prior to approval of the ridge at Indian Creek, first edition, final plats of boat construction. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27919, approving the issuance of building permits for lots one through three, four three duplex buildings prior to approval of the ridge at Indian Creek, first edition, final plats. 
This will be abode construction. Discussion? This kind of comes back to the question again of us issuing these rights before we're receiving uh, the approvals. Uh, has, been, has there been any change on that, Mr. Trahorn? No, there's, I mean, it's, it's not uncommon this time of year or when a final plat, um, when they get some, they like to get permits in before they have to post surety or complete all the public <coughs> improvements associated with the final plat. So at this point, we're just offering or, or allowing, like any other contractor, building permits to start their process prior to us um, approving basically their site work. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, well, the final plat. So the final plat. Uh, yeah. Okay. They wouldn't be able to transfer the property or uh, we wouldn't give them occupancies until such time as we have assurances that public improvements would be made and, and agreements in place or that they're already made and completed. Okay, very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Once again, any other questions or discussion on this item? Seeing none, moving forward. All those in favor of resolution number 27919 signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion passes with the abstention of the mayor. This time I will relinquish the meeting back over to the mayor. Thank you. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27920, approving Central Corridor Review for a multi-tenant commercial property at 1204 7th Avenue, Marion, Iowa. And this is uh, What Do You Want, Inc. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27920, approving Central Corridor Review for a multi-tenant commercial build uh, property at 1204 7th Avenue, Marion, Iowa. Discussion. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment for Mike and say that we do appreciate and notice uh, the way you supported and worked with the PNZ and the Uptown District in kind of resolving some of the comments or questions they had. So I think that ends up favorable for everybody. So we do appreciate you working with everybody on those. I'll echo those remarks. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of resolution number 27919, please say aye. <coughs> aye. All those opposed, please say no. Um, no. You repeated the first resolution. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Which one did you say? Two, the other one twice now. Yeah. 27920. Let me repeat that. All those in favor of resolution number 27920, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Thank you for pointing that out. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27921, approving a temporary right of way easement and temporary grading easement for property located at the southeast corner of Indian Creek Road and Tower Terrace Road, and this is by the City of Marion. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27921, approving temporary right-of-way easement and temporary grading easement for property located at the southeast corner of Indian Creek Road and Tower Terrace Road. Discussion? Uh, they would interfere at all with the two-way stop sign that's there now, the Tower Terrace? I you know, it's have Indian Creek has a stop sign uh, in both directions. <coughs> I don't believe. I don't believe that that's that's a, that's not in the area that that would be. I don't believe that that's in the area that that you're referring to. Oh, well, any Creek Road, Tower Terrace Road. So there's currently there's there wouldn't there's no access onto Tower Terrace Road at that location. The Indian Creek Road? There is, sure there is. I believe you have to go over to Winslow and then back up to get to Tower Terrace. You can't get there from Indian Creek. They call that something else where the... An old Tower Terrace. So this is Tower Terrace Road and Indian Creek comes in. It's the old skew angle. But these, this, uh, these have been... 
blocked off. Now Winslow, Winslow tees in. Further west, yeah. Further west. So these have been, there's no access on Tower Terrace from the existing Indian Creek. What, what is, is the roadway that runs from Indian Creek back there in front of the Win dwelling? Winslow, there's like. Winslow runs both sides. So this would have no interfection, inter no. interference with those. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think I know that that where th there's the north-south stop signs where Tower Terrace comes into Winslow. It's right. um, it's it's uh, the only reason I ask. It's already two miles further since we closed Indian Creek mm. to get the town. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only reason I ask. Okay. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 27921, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. <laughs> Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27922, approving the acquisition plat associated with the property located at 2350 Fifth Avenue. This will be City of Marion. Second. It has been moved by Council Member Sternad and seconded by Council Member Brandt to approve resolution number 27922, approving the acquisition plat associated with the property at 2350 Fifth Avenue. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor of resolution number 27922 say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. <coughs> Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27923, approving acquisition plat associated with property located at 2201 7th Avenue, City of Marion. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27923, approving the acquisition plat associated with the property at 2201 7th Avenue. Discussion. All those in favor of resolution number 27923 say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27924, approving the Tower Terrace Road Corridor Management Plan update. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27923224, approving the Tower Terrace Road Corridor Management Plan update. Discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 27924, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 27925, approving contract with Angberg Anderson as architect for the library building project. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 27925, approving the contract with Engberg, Engberg Anderson as architect for the library building project. Discussion? Yes. Ma'am? This is exciting. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. We're moving. Okay. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, a major step forward, so. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. I do have one um, statement to make regarding this contract, and that is that um, I have made review of the contract, and there are some minor changes that we have not received back, but I am comfortable in approving the signing of the contract. We've agreed on all of the changes. They just haven't gotten us the final draft, but I just wanted to make sure that that's on the record. So um, if you've seen the initial contract, there will be a few changes and hopefully we'll have that. They were very quick with our initial changes, so hopefully we'll have that back from them tomorrow. Okay, are, are these substantive changes? No, there are just some um, minor words here and there, and then it's the standard form, and so there's a few paragraphs I ask them to remove, and they're going to do that. Everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor of approving resolution number 27925, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. 
The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to, uh, uh, <laughs> to receive and file a request for qualifications for a construction manager for the library building project approved by the library board of trustees dated 8-15-2019. It's been moved and seconded to receive and file a request for qualifications for a construction manager for the library building project approved by the Library Board of Trustees on August 15, 2019. Discussion. All those in favor of receiving and filing the request for qualifications, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion is approved. At this time, we have um, public forums set aside for comments from the public on topics other than those listed on the agenda. Anyone here to address the council? Please come forward. Okay, we'll move on. Council discussion time. Mr. Draper? Yes, we uh, had some new firemen tonight and uh, brought back to memories and the, the chief was good enough to look up some things for us from the early wow. fire drills. In the 1800s, these were br bucket brigades and there wasn't a source of water other than a bucket at a time. Which one's you? And, yeah, I was. <laughs> and, uh, and the water... Our water ran in wooden containers. We didn't have any any other way to run water, so we would run like a wooden trough, much like guttering on a house, and the water would run down and the fire brigade would put them out. We had six at one time of the fire groups like this, and... Uh, we had, the, they took over uh, marching a lot and showing off their wares. And the J.C. Davis, who was the mayor, he uh, took over actually what was the moving out of the Baptist uh, church. And I think you have a photograph there of the guys climbing ladders to the top of the steeple on that building. And Marion was fortunate as we, you know, we had a lot of fires in the early 1800s because Marion was wooden, you know, lumber country and we, we built a lot of buildings out of wood. This particular building was built out of Marion bricks made down by Bezdex, along with uh, almost all of 10th Street and almost all of 7th Avenue. So it was a long time before we got a two-man pumper to pump the fuel or the water into a fire. But this J.C. Davis group, um, in their uniforms, which meant a lot to them, went to Des Moines and became the best fire brigade group in the state of Iowa. We, had, we were number one for a while. So I think that, you know, when, when you think back, uh, we had one fire truck, and our chief knows where it is, where our first one is. And we'd, uh, I'd still like to start raising enough money to go and bring it back home. Uh, because prior to that, everything was by hand, hand pumps, buckets, and what have you for fire. So these were the days, and you know, when you, we had a number of fires and uh, groups, and they would all line up, and they'd have a parade of all of them, and a marching group was a, a big thing for the fire department and uni uniforms were a big thing for the fire department. So, Chief has uh, <clears throat> looked those up and, and I think uh, the other thing is that in those days you'll notice 
on the front of the building at 610 10th Street, a plaque to the right of the door. And you'll also notice a uh, wrought iron plaque to the right of the door uh, on the snug bar going upstairs. Those are fire marks. Insurance companies issued those. And if they'd go to the site of a fire and there wasn't one there, that fire brigade knew they were not going to be paid if they put that fire out. So they had a great, if you see those in antique shops and around, pick them up because they're very valuable in today's world. Farm Bureau probably had them. State Farm did, I know. Uh, Chuck Kent has one down there. So that's all I have, Mary. I just I thought the fire was interesting tonight because of the history of the fire department and what's happened since then. Thank you. <coughs> Steve? Well, this is a very sad but happy time for many of us right now. Sad because summer's going to be coming to an end. Happy because parents are sending kids back to school, so they're very happy. And it's also now time for officially football. high school and college football, which is my favorite. And I also want to congratulate Lieutenant Knott and Lieutenant Elam for making the final four candidates list. So I wish you luck. Thank you. Real quick, uh, Mr. Draper down there brought up the bricks on that building. And I'm, I'm assuming the bricks in the streets on 11th, were those Marion bricks also? They are Marion bricks. Um, That'd be nice. They had the right kind of clay down by Besnix. Uh -huh. And they uh, eventually ran out. But hmm. most of the soft red bricks you see around town are Marion bricks and some of the paving bricks. Paving brick ones were just, um, they would, they were in a form in the sun for a period of time, and then they'd build a bonfire and put them around that bonfire to bake them. Hmm. So they were baked hard. Well, the ones they were going to use on the street, they'd bake a little longer, and they'd be finished, and they'd be smoother than the ones on the building. Hmm. But the ones on the buildings that appear, uh, they're red and appear soft. If you want to look at one, look at my office over there. Those bricks are all from down by Bezdex. Yeah. They eventually ran out of clay. Hmm. Well, I think it would be important that over the next few years, we might have to might start looking at re reconstructing 11th and preserving those bricks. Because you go drive down 11th right now, Street, as everyone knows, on the north of 7th Ave. It's, I mean, wavy, bumpy, it's crazy. So it'd be, I think it's important that we preserve that history of Marion because there's Marion bricks there. And that's really the only street left in town that I can think of that's long stretch anyway of brick, original brick road. So, no, no they didn't, well, yeah. we didn't have any long brick road. I'm long stretch. I mean, yeah, there's some on 10 still, but I mean, right. a long, nice stretch. I think it'd be great to preserve or. Might, I might mention the depot of bricks, and then I'll get off of here, Mayor. Uh, we're from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I bricks up. And <laughs> we cleaned over 120,000 bricks. And we found one brick with a brick mark stapled into it that gave the name of the company in Pennsylvania. And you can imagine all those brought in here by rail and that building being built. And then as we reconstructed it, we cleaned all those bricks. So those are not local bricks, and that's why they're shiny like they are. Thank you. Anything else, Will? Okay. No, I just wanted to right. say okay. it would be good in the next few years to maybe think about starting to preserve that street. Yeah. I know it's going to be expensive, but save. Um, yeah, I have a couple quick things. I just wanted to mention um, publicly that I ha um, approached staff, and I believe that the Swamp Fox Committee will be looking at um, 
having an opportunity for the council candidates to be involved at Swamp Fox in the capacity of like a meet and greet, I'm not even sure. Um, not a debate, there will be plenty of opportunities for those kinds of things, but I just think that so many people don't engage in this process and these are important um, positions and I think by the time Swamp Fox rolls around, all the candidates will be official in terms of paperwork and signatures and it would be nice to have them in a venue that is not only a positive celebratory event for the city, but where so many citizens come throughout the day in and out to be able to meet and ask questions um, of candidates. So I don't know what, if anything, would be put together, but I do think that this is something we should start to do, particularly if it goes well, um, but to give all the candidates an opportunity to be in this setting, um, not on stage in a debate, et cetera, which are th really the only things that I think are typically done uh, during election season. So I, I thought this might shine a nice light on, um, on candidates. Um, also wanted to say uh, I hope it's a great school year for everyone going back to school, K through 12, uh, all the schools in the area. And then to the swearing in earlier, I think it's awesome that half of the firefighters went through the Citizens Academy, two of the four. I thought that was super cool. Was it three? Yeah, three. Oh my gosh, okay, awesome. Um, three of the four, and I love the personal statements. I love learning about um, people and their backgrounds, and also with the police officers, one from the West Coast, one from the East Coast, coming into Iowa, just um, it's a very, um, proud moment to be part of the city in this capacity when we have the ceremonies like those. So it's nice to be a part of it and I wish them all the best. That's all I was. Thank you. Uh, for my part, uh, since the last meeting uh, attended the uh, Vision Iowa CAT grant uh, presentation that the Y gave in uh, Bettendorf uh, and there was a, uh, quite a few people from, from Marion who went there. Um, uh, to support the, the um, presentation. Um, I've had a number of meetings uh, with, with residents who have issues about one thing or another and I just want to, um, since it, you know, all, all, this happens all the time, but especially in the last couple of weeks and I just want to thank the staff uh, because usually, you know, I mean, I, I try to be very responsive to those kinds of concerns when they're brought up, and I do get a lot of phone calls and emails about things. Um, and I don't always have all the answers myself, but I refer uh, the question to whoever is best suited to answer it and the staff and to address it. And I, I just want to express my appreciation of the staff for their responsiveness and their customer service uh, attitude in terms of. Uh, understanding that we're here to, to, to help people solve their problems and to answer their questions and we're here, we're employed by, by, by the residents of Marion. And so um, I just want to again express my appreciation because I, 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 I am really proud of how our staff responds quickly, professionally and does their best to find workable solutions to, uh, to the issues or to explain things in a way that you know, you know, makes the person feel like they were listened to and um, and that they their, their opinion matters or their question is is, uh, is important to us so thank you with that concludes our meeting have a great weekend